So today is Monday, January 9th. All the <laughs> Hello, Julia. I hope you're watching. Everyone's missing you. Nice job on uh, Saturday. Good luck tomorrow. Maybe I'll see you. So Friday we did integrals of du over u. Did a whole bunch of those. Just did some practice problems of those. And there's 7 and 8. And it's like, well, that doesn't look like du over u. Exactly. So <laughs> that's right. Why, why, is this, why is this in this section? And why did Mr. Wolf save a whole day for two problems? That maybe has you worried. Well, there is not an, I mean, we don't know the antiderivative of tangent of x. Be careful, we know the derivative of tangent of x, right? What's the derivative of tangent of x? Secant squared. So be careful, you see that, and you're like, oh, secant squared. Like, no, wait a minute. No, that's the, the derivative is secant squared. The integral, I don't know that yet. And this is probably one of those where if you didn't see your math teacher do it, how would you know what to do with this thing? What's another way to write tangent? Sine over cosine. Sine over cosine. Now if we start thinking about u and du, what could I let u be? Cosine. And be careful because you pick either one and the other you know, is the derivative. So you, in some ways it feels like you could go either way. But you, want but you definitely don't want du in the bottom. Yeah. So that means we better let u be the stuff in the bottom. Derivative cosine is negative sine, so it didn't work out perfectly, but the negative is an easy fix. So I du is in the top, u is in the bottom, and it's like, oh, we've done this three times already today mm -hmm. and a bunch of times on Friday so the antiderivative of du over u is natural log of u uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace u with cosine plus c so negative natural log of cosine of x plus c now if we want to get tricky, that's probably what most people remember, will remember when it comes to, to memorizing. Uh, and that one is easy enough that even if you just sort of remember how to start it, it doesn't take long to get there. And so is memorizing that one absolutely necessary? Ah, maybe, maybe not. If you can at least remember what to do first, then you're halfway there. And so maybe you don't have to memorize. Just know that replace tangent with sine over cosine. And then your brain is like, oh yeah, du over u, natural log, we're good. Or memorize it, but I don't know. So either way, remember the process or remember the final answer, either way. Thank you, poison. Now there is one option here because properties of logs, what can I do with that negative sign? The coefficient of a log can, what can it do? Do you remember? It can become the power of the argument. So that negative one out front can be the negative one on the exponent. And, then it becomes LN. and it's like, well, why would you do that? Except that 1 over cosine is secant. So uh, is that easier because they're not a minus sign? Or is it harder because it's secant rather than cosine? Eh, I don't know. And for a multiple choice, mm -hmm. it could be either one. So you, you've got to be careful. Now, again, it wouldn't. both of the answers wouldn't be there for a multiple choice. So if you made it this far and you started looking at your answers, hopefully you'd realize, I mean, maybe you'd realize that that negative as an exponent makes it secant. In fact, let's go ahead and fill out the table down here. No, let's pass on the table. We'll come back to that in a minute. Integral of secant of x.
Now, this one, you definitely would not get, well, I shouldn't say never. Most of us would not get this one unless you saw your math teacher do it first. Because what we're going to do is one of those math trick things that's like, how, who discovered that? How did they figure that out? What we're going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by secant of x plus tangent of x. Right, and that's the proper response. Like, what? What? Why? What's that's that? Just one. What does that? Right, that's just one, so it doesn't change anything. So we're certainly allowed to do that. Now, why would it be helpful? Well, we're in the section of u substitution and antiderivatives, u du, especially with natural logs. So even though this seems weird, what do you think we should? Let you be. Um, then we'll just hope for the best after that. Secant because uh, on the top it's going to become secant squared. The antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. Okay, so you're on the right track. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. So that part is kind of there. What's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared. So let's let u be all of the denominator. Du, so derivative of secant is secant tangent. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. And that's what the numerator is. It doesn't look like it, but if you distribute the secant and rearrange the order, now we've got du over u again. That looks like a bunch of so natural log of the absolute value of u secant of x plus tangent of x plus c. Not really. All right. Let's look at the, the stuff that may or may not be on the quiz tomorrow. I mean, will be on the quiz tomorrow. So left-hand column, we're supposed to already know these. So these should be familiar. In fact, familiar enough for me to find the six-period bin of popsicle sticks and find six uh, worthy volunteers. Or unfortunate victims, whichever. If I'm sleeping, don't wake me. That's I probably weird. need it. Oh, she might be sleeping. <laughs> I, I, I hope she is. Hope she's recovering. <laughs> okay, but these folks are all here, and we've mentioned most of these already today. So hopefully this isn't too bad. Logan, start us off. What's the antiderivative of cosine? Yes. Sine plus C. Good. Preston, how about the antiderivative of sine? Uh, negative cosine of X plus C. Good. Negative cosine of X plus C. Luna? Tan X plus C. Isaiah? Well, these two kind of go together, just like these two. In fact, they go together in sort of the same way. Negative. You've got to listen to Trey closer or Ty, whoever is feeding you information. Ty. Listen to Ty. He said negative. Okay, negative is right. You I said like tangent. It's not that. It's cotangent. It's cotangent. Because the sine and co, tangent and co. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kyle, how about the antiderivative of secant tangent? Secant of x plus c. And then Nick? Well, follow the pattern. Uh, so it is cosecant, but how do the rest of the pairs work? Negative cosecant. 
So those are the ones that, in theory, we already know. Theory. Okay, the new ones. Antiderivative of tangent. That's the one we just did. Uh, again, I don't really have that one memorized. I just know that if I rewrite tangent as sine over cosine, and then I realize that that's du over u, so natural log of cosine of x, but negative because of the sine stuff. Or natural log of secant without the negative. I shouldn't say without the negative. If we use the negative as the exponent and flip it over, it becomes secant. I think most books list the one, this one first because they think it's simpler. I like listing this one first because it's the one I figured out first. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, follow the pattern of all the others. Yeah, you could. You, if you need to figure it out, you can write cosine over sine and go that way. Or you could just look at these. Sine it's sine instead. So natural log of sine of x plus c. And the sine changes. The plus minus changes to plus. And you're right, though. Maybe it's easier to just rewrite it as cosine over sine, and then u is sine, d is cosine, and there's what you get. Or I don't know why you'd write this one, because there's like two things wrong with this. Negative natural log of cosecant. I would not, I would not do it that way. Natural log of sine seems a lot easier. Antiderivative of secant, there's no shortcut way to get that one. That was the ugly example number eight we just did. That one is more just have to memorize that it's mm -hmm. secant of x plus tangent of x plus c. But if you memorize that one, Kira, they come in pairs. So what do you think the antiderivative of cosecant is? Got it. So the quiz tomorrow has all of those on there. Obviously, the, the four new ones are the ones on the right. But is it really four new ones, or is it two new ones? Two new ones. I mean, I'm going to say it's two just because that makes it sound better. But if you know the pattern of the first three, then adding the second two isn't that bad. So you definitely got to memorize this one. To me, that's the one that you got to know that one. There's no way to figure that out <laughs> quickly anyway. The others you can kind of figure out. Okay, and then there's like notes to myself. Quiz tomorrow, like real quiz, not like most of the quizzes where we, you know, end up everybody making 100 kind of thing. Like real quiz tomorrow. Um, and then today's assignment is worksheet 3, 11 through 20. We have time. We can work some of these. Worksheet 1 through 3. No, the quiz is is almost exclusively. And when I say almost exclusively, I mean exclusively that box. The, and you're like, what box? What box are you talking about? The box we just did. The box of... Of antiderivative trig integrals. It's open note, right? It's not open note because <laughs> it would just be. There's nothing crazy about it. I mean, it's, it. There's no u substitution or anything. It is straight from the box. It is just straight regurgitation. That's fair. What? The TCU fans are going to be too sad to take the quiz. Oh, the George. Or maybe they'll be celebrating and too happy to. Too happy. I'm going to be too happy to take the quiz. The Georgia fans will be in tears tomorrow. Are you a TCU fan? Probably not, but... Yeah, Mr. Wolf's a TCU fan. <laughs> I'm pulling for TCU tonight, but I'm not it hopeful of the, the result. All right, so let's take I a few minutes. If TCU wins tonight, we all get an automatic 100. Um, let's look at worksheet three. Do a couple of these together. What is number 11? It's 
scaring me. Number 11. Yes. It is scaring me. Number 11. So, I know the antiderivative of secant. Uh-huh. Sort of. We just learned it. It's natural log of secant plus tangent. Mm-hmm. So, they're, secant and tangent, there's something about them that go together. We didn't talk about that on the... Uh, maybe that helps as well. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. Secant is 1 over cosine. The antiderivative of secant is natural log secant plus tangent. And secant is 1 over cosine? It is. That doesn't really help me here. I know the natural law, or excuse me, I know the antiderivative of secant, so I can handle that. Mm -hmm. What I can't really handle is the x and in the, there. Then there's the 2x And then there's squared a 2x squared. But maybe there's a u substitution I could do that would help make sense of the extra stuff in this problem. 2x squared? Let's try 2x squared. Again, if I make u be secant of 2x squared, then du is going to be secant tangent, and that's going to be a mess, right? You want you to make your life easier by taking care of some of the complicated stuff, but if you let you be too complicated, then du is a giant mess, and you're really messed up. So du is 4x dx. Would you say that is good news or bad news? Good. Yes, I'd say good, because all we need now is a 4 on that x and a 1 fourth out front. We can always fix coefficients to, to be what we need them to be. So one fourth antiderivative secant of u to u. Let's see, we just did this one. The antiderivative of secant. Natural, natural log, log of secant, secant plus tangent. Plus c. There's no one else. Just because it's early, I didn't want to fly through and substitute u back in just yet. But I need to to finish the problem. So secant of 2x squared plus tangent of 2x squared plus c. So combining u substitution with what we already have, or what we already know, or I guess what we just learned. Number 12. Well, cosine over sine is cotangent. So, yeah. sine over cotangent is sine? Is that logical? Let's see. I'm probably going to whiff on this a few times before I get it right. And that happens on uh, more complicated trig things. So, I'm thinking of through my options for what u could be. If I let u be cosine of x minus 1, then du is sine of x, and that doesn't really do anything for me because I got cotangent down there. If I let u be cotangent, the derivative of cotangent is cosecant squared. That doesn't, that doesn't help me either. But if we make u cotangent, oh. That's what we were just trying. What if we did... Something like that, and like, like try to do some tr some trig cosine x trickery. Cosine one is sine, right? Cosine squared x minus one is sine. Sine squared. Let's see. You could get rid of the cosine. Like, like keep it, change it, flip it here. Cosine x minus one over cosine times sine. Could you get rid of those cosines, or do you...? Well, I can get rid of that cosine. Yeah. Let's see. So that would be 1 minus secant of x. And then you can... Times sine of x. Are you okay with like that? I, I feel like you can get somewhere with that. I think we're on our way here. I'm still thinking u and du. I've been lazy and not putting my antiderivative. If u is sine, du is cosine, so that doesn't really help. If u is 1 minus secant, derivative of secant is secant, secant tangent. That didn't help. I think there's still more trig to do here. Let's distribute the sine. I'm almost out of room here. Um, secant 
is 1 over, is one over cosine. So secant times sine is tangent. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're fine because we know the antiderivative of sine. We have to think about it for a minute, but we sort of know the antiderivative of tangent. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Yeah, cosine becomes negative sine. Antiderivative of tangent. I can do it without looking. Natural log mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. cosine, because I would put cosine in the bottom and sine in the top, mm -hmm. except it needs to be a negative, so I'm going to make that positive. Ugh. But that was mostly trig, I mean it was all trig, but it was mostly trig tricks rather than calculus tricks. Yuck. But I didn't know that right away. Like I really was thinking let's try use substitution, but nothing really worked. And so then I switched to, to trig. Um, let's see. Oh, there's no more trig on that page. For 13, could you pull out a 1, 4? Absolutely. Especially if you're looking at your answer choices. So, yeah, with answer choices, I would probably take out the 1 fourth before you even started this problem. Since you see 4s and negative 4s and stuff on the outside of 13. 13, 15. Yeah, I think these are straightforward. Yeah. And they're all multiple choice. So, not a terrible assignment on the night of the national championship game. Go Frogs. <laughs>